Today we're going to be looking at the DC Collectibles DC Designer Series Aunt Lucia DC Bombshells Figure 5 Batgirl. Batgirl is exactly, we'll put the tape measure next to her, if you count the tips of her ears on her cowl, that is, she stands at seven inches exactly. She gets three accessories, but we'll look at those in a second. But first, let's have a look at the figure. Now, the honest truth is, I shot this video twice. I shot this video the first time around being very, very, um, somewhat critical of her head sculpt. I think I, then ultimately what I did was I looked at the video and I thought, you know what, I need to kind of really look at this figure again before I look at, before I review her again. So ultimately this is now the second time I'm looking at this figure and the first time that you guys are watching the video. But in the initial review, when I started recording and looking at the figure, I felt as if, and I said frequently in that, in that first efforts, that the head sculpt looked distorted. Now I know looking at it, and if I was to say take the cowl off, which I know I can't do, hair would obviously be now falling out of the areas in which the cowl has been pulling it back. The hair, like say draped to the front, I think would, would make the figure look appropriate. Because she's got the cowl, I think what throws me off is that from the nose down to the chin is an area that seems obviously further forward as you know that's human anatomy and because the cowl is pulling everything back it's keeping everything very tight and because of the angle of the ears it ends up looking from the side not as bad but from the front I find it looks as if her face is swelling like it's being blown up like a balloon and I know it's only an optical illusion and all, all the more reason why I wanted to re-review the figure a second go around because I really thought that that was just kind of my perception of what the figure was and I really had to spend some time kind of just like looking at the figure again before trying a second go around. I think it's just again the op the optical illusion aspect of it with the angled back nature of the ears that it does look from the front like her face is swelling up and I know that's not necessarily the case. She actually does have a quite a nice face sculpt with a very big smile and very, very pretty eyes with some shading right above there for her eye shadow. But the only thing I really don't like about the eyes or about the areas around the eyes are her eyebrows, which to me kind of reads a little closer like they've just been drawn on rather than sculpted eyebrows. She has the little ponytail of hair that jets out from the bottom area of her cowl. And again, generally, I think the face sculpt is really good. From the side, it looks good. Three quarter turn, it looks good. And just from the front, for me, again, it looks swollen, but I, I really have to tell myself it's not the case. It's just really, it's really what I'm seeing with my eyes here. So let's talk about the rest of the figure, which clearly looks like it's taken cues from the original classic Batman TV series with the sort of color palettes that they chose with the figure here. Now you've got the lighter yellows in the belt and the little pocket areas of her utility belt. And then they've got the gold of the, the bat emblem on the front, which again really reads like a classic TV series Batgirl, even though the costume obviously is drastically different than what we could, would get with the original uh, Batgirl from the series. Uh, I do really like the colors, especially the violet. It works very well with the cowl where you've got the ox, the, uh, you, you've got the complementary of the black on the purple, which I help adds to a level of depth to the uh, the sculpt here, especially like it when it gets to the torso area here with the bodice, where you've got the very stark metallic gold of the emblem, and then you've got the complementary blacks and purples underneath it, just to kind of elevate the uh, the gold emblem there. Especially liking the outlining, the purple outlining that they've got around the bat logo, the bat girl logo, and I love the little points in the middle there. Got a couple of straps that wrap around and a very small detail. She's got little tiny bat emblems uh, on printed onto the purple there, which is a really nice touch. 
The sculpting of the belt is done exceptionally well, including the bat logo on the middle belt buckle of her bat utility belt. Again, so you've got some straps running down from there, rounding out to, unfortunately, a very small footprint, which I'm surprised the second go around, because the first time I tried doing this review, she didn't stand at all. Subsequently, though, as you can see here, she stands okay, but it's just a matter of timing and pure luck that I can get her to stand. Because she has such a small footprint, it doesn't make for the easiest figure to really stand upright. I am actually really glad that I'm doing this the second time around because I found the first time I was way overly critical of this figure. And I'm really glad that I took the time to just kind of, you know, take a step back, kind of digest everything I had consumed and looked at it again. Okay, so let's talk her accessories. Now, she does have the little bat goggles here, Batgirl goggles, which are uh, primarily a, a brown color, and then the lenses themselves are in yellow, like a translucent yellow. You can do a couple of different things. You can drape it on top of her head, but just by the nature of how small the strap is, uh, it doesn't really do the greatest of job of staying in place when you've got them further up but it almost mimics something that you would, one would expect maybe from a, a Catwoman, where you've got the goggles above her head rather than, you know, on her eyes. Or what you can also do too is move the eyes, move the goggles down to cover over top of her eyes. It's a good looking effect, but again, it does look a little distorted from the front. It does make it kind of look like the face is being blown up like a balloon. Her other accessory, now this is one of the things I really don't like about this figure, is her backpack. Her backpack pegs in very similar to Hawkgirl's jetpack as it has two pegs. One larger than the other, so it tells you exactly which side to go, but I, I guess looking at it you really would know that the backpack goes this way rather than this way. But this is a big problem that I have with this. This is a very difficult thing to initially open up. The culprit here is a very long peg that ultimately, when you try to get it first done, undone, it's, it's fine now, but I actually had to take a screwdriver and pry it open. And I started developing a little bit of a stress mark here where the peg attaches into the, into the little hole area here because there's so much peg deep inside the backpack. So you may have some frustration trying to get that to open up. Once it's opened up though, it doesn't have anything inside. However, she does also come with her Batgirl cape, which, much like her outfit, is a paler yellow on the interior, and then you got the purple on the outside. The idea is it's supposed to just hook on to the backpack like this, and then you're supposed to line up, line up the hole on the cape to the hole on the, on the knapsack, and then the peg is supposed to go through it. A lot of times you may find that the peg is bending, so what I do instead is I, I attach the cape, Let's see if I can do it right here, as you can see, that peg does bend a lot. It doesn't help that it's a softer rubber. Mind you, if it was a denser plastic, it would break off instantly, but the rubber does help a little bit. But attach it first, then hook it over, and then plug it into place. And it seems to do, most often than not, a better job of plugging it into place. Give me something that looks like that. Then you can go ahead and attach it to the back of the character's torso. And the pegs are a little difficult to get in, as you will find yourself really kind of forcing it until it eventually gives in and plugs into the back of the character's torso, giving you a, a figure that looks like this once everything's been added to it. It's an interesting looking effect, and uh, one that's slightly different, obviously, than her just wearing the cape over top of her shoulders. It's, it's a really neat looking uh, play on the idea of her wearing a cape other than just wearing a cape. Other than that, she doesn't she doesn't come with any other accessories. For a bat character, you know, a batarang or some other, you know, accessories or weapons would have been a nice touch to include, especially by the fact that they tease with having her her hands partially gripping as if they are supposed to be holding something and she simply just doesn't have it. Posability on this figure, her head rotates left and right, up and down, uh, due to the ball joint there. Universal joints on the arms, so they not only hinge outward, but you can rotate them all the way around a swivel on the bicep, a double hinge on the elbow, and then she's got a rotation and hinge on the hand. Like with the other ones as well, she has an upper torso crunch or upper, to upper torso ball joint, 
a lower crunch right by the waist area, which actually ends up making the figure having no waist swivel, but you can certainly still compensate by doing that by just you know moving the ball joint on the upper torso. And then lastly, she has ball joints on the legs, which aren't hindered luckily by the fact that the straps are covering over it. You would think that they would be slightly restricting the legs. They actually don't restrict it as much as the pouches on the front, which sort of stop the legs from being able to move forward any, any more than that. Also got the double hinge on the knee. Nothing in the boots, uh, but she does have the ankle hinge, which moves up and down. And then she's got the ankle rocker as well. I was actually very surprised. Again, I could get the figure to stand for the size of her footprint. It can be tricky at times that I just ultimately, I ultimately just gave up at the beginning and I used a display stand. But you can see the figure still stands quite well. As a figure reviewer, sometimes one has to take a step back from a figure, reassess things, and look at it again. In the initial review, I really was dissecting and criticizing the fact that the figure's head seemed really swollen. I still feel that way, but I think looking at everything, it comes together in a way that it would naturally if a character such as this did exist and was wearing a cowl. The overall execution of the figure is quite nice. I do wish that she could have come with some accessories, but overall, I think the figure has turned out quite nice. And I'm really glad that I looked at the figure a second go around instead of just simply sticking with my initial opinions of the figure. It's not as good as it's not as good as Hawk Girl, I will say this. But I think Batgirl still does things quite well for a DC Bombshells figure. She, as well as the other Bombshell characters, are, are currently available in comic book stores. So if you guys are looking to pick up this one for yourself... Uh, you can find her at your local comic book store and you can go to www.comicshoplocator.com if you can't find a comic book store in your area. We will be having a look at the other DC uh, bombshell figures, uh, of course, in other videos upcoming, so stay tuned for those. And if you haven't had a chance yet to hit that little subscribe button, there's no, no time like the present, hit it below and you'll never miss a beat when it comes to future videos. As always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do. I'll see you guys next time.